Hello, and welcome to this Steel Beast tutorial on the Jim LR. The Jim LR stands for, in French, Jumel Infrarouge Multifunction, or in English, Infrared Multifunctional Binocular Long Range, and it's manufactured by Safran Electronics and Defense. The Jim LR is a handheld or tripod mounted individual observation device in a binocular format employed for threat detection, target identification, and fire control purposes. In other words, it's a high-end surveillance tool for infantry in the field. It combines a day channel with a cooled thermal imager, iSafe Langer rangefinder, digital magnetic compass, and GPS to provide self and target location capabilities. As of October 2019, over 9,000 units have been supplied to military customers, and the system is standard issue with the Danish, French, and UK armed forces. In Steel Beasts, the Jim LR is available at team, squad, and section level. This tutorial will demonstrate in mission how the Jim LR can help with the task of detecting enemy presence and direction, identifying specific enemy units and equipment, and use the location and range finding abilities to call fire support accurately. In the process, this tutorial will serve as a refresher on how to enable artillery support in the mission editor as well as how to call that support and adjust it in mission. This video will show how to enable special, smart artillery ordnance like the M989 Sidarm for a mission you create, and how those rounds are employed in mission. The situation created for this tutorial in the mission editor is that the blue side is awaiting the arrival of a Red Force convoy of armor and supply vehicles from the north. There is a rifle platoon stationed overwatching a town and a bridge the convoy is expected to pass through, while a scout to the north is doing surveillance on the road through the valley to the town. The plan will be for the scout to monitor the arrival and progress of the convoy through the mission area, and the rifle platoon to the south will use any detected opportunities to call in artillery support to attrit or destroy the convoy. The first step is to equip both the platoon leader who has the best overwatch position in the south and the scout unit in the north with the Jim LR. To select the Jim LR for a unit, left mouse click on the unit, click on options, click on personal optronics, click on Jim LR. Go ahead and do the same thing for the scout unit in the north. For comparison's sake and mission, this mission also provides a forward observer. This unit is here in this mission to help give a comparison of the Jim LR with what equipment you might be used to when using the forward observer. For the time being, the forward observer is here to show that he has similar personal optronics options available to what you might equip other infantry units with. Later on, this tutorial will compare his fire mission specific equipment with what the Jim LR provides both in terms of information and capabilities. Now for the artillery setup. This is a streamlined version of the setup that is simplified to give the most flexibility in mission for demonstration purposes. Go to Options, Support, Blue, and then in Off-Map Support, Rounds per Tube, leave HE and ICM as unlimited, and leave Smoke at zero. Keep Tubes per Battery at six, and batteries at three. Note that in reality this is equivalent to an artillery battalion. A tremendous amount of support and the purpose of a smart artillery round is to conserve ammunition. While in this demonstration the amounts used are in far excess of that, in practice mission designers should be much more conservative with these amounts. Before closing, set the options at top to allow all units to fire, but disable allow AI to call for fire. To enable the M989 Sidarm, or Sense and Destroy Armor, rounds, deploy some artillery units to the map, in this case a battery of M109s over here. And edit their ammo, removing the standard HE from these on-map units. Give each tank 24 Sidarm rounds which in practice should be much less for a real mission. We are doing this for demonstration purposes. 
So what's special about these M989s? These artillery rounds employ sensors, parachutes, and explosively formed penetrators, known as EFPs, that allow the round to sense and then explicitly target and destroy an enemy vehicle from above. This is the kind of cutting-edge technology Steel Bees simulates. The next step is to test the mission. Here is the lay of the land. There is the town in the valley, as viewed from the rifle platoon leader. There is the hill where the scout is hidden, to the north, and meanwhile, out of sight, the convoy is on the move, with a platoon of T-14 armadas leading the way. The blue team doesn't know the specifics yet, but they will soon. While the platoon waits for the convoy, this is a good time to review the keys for the Jim LR. In game, to select the Jim LR, press F7, Commander View, press F1 View, press Number Pad Plus, which normally would be Thermal View for your tank site, so it may take some practice to remember what to use when. As you can see, your view might be initially out of focus. This is something the tutorial will address shortly. First, to zoom in, press N, and Shift N to zoom out. This is different than how the gunner's primary sight works on other vehicles and steel beasts, such as the M1A2, for example, so that's another thing to remember. The day view offers three levels of digital zoom. If the object you are looking at is out of focus, which often will be the case, press number pad slash or alt key middle mouse roll up to focus closer or number pad asterisk also known as number pad alt or alt key middle mouse roll down to focus farther away until the object comes into focus. You may find this familiar from how you would use a binoculars in real life. You can also use number pad delete key or period to autofocus. Press shift and number pad asterisk at the same time to toggle the thermal view. Similar to on the gunner's primary sight on many tanks, zoom and focus are set separately between thermal and day views. The Jim LR's thermal channel has four levels of magnification, the last of which is higher than possible with the day channel. In other words, you can zoom even further with the thermal channel. This makes it a great tool for long-range target detection and is a good reason to use it by default when operating the Jim LR. You can toggle the polarity of the display by pressing number pad sub, which is also known as the minus key on the number pad. You can toggle that polarity back again by pressing number pad sub again. Note the amount of information, some of which is redundant in various places. The compass ribbon is up at the top and you can see the mills reading in the upper right as well as the date and time adjacent to that. Note that the mills reading goes from 0 to 6400 clockwise, starting from the north around the compass. To get a range on a vehicle or an area of the map, target that area with the crosshairs and then right mouse click. You can also press the control key or joystick button 3. A panel appears at the left of the display, giving you a variety of useful information on the location of the vehicle in time and space. In this example, the two sets of digits shown above, which are UTM coordinates, are the coordinates you need to call in support. However, if you press R, you can toggle from UTM coordinates to the traditional latitude and longitude coordinates. Sometimes, particularly on distant or indistinct targets, the laser will get multiple returns, in which case D1 is the closest return, D3 is the longest return, and D2 the system's best guess. The latter is usually, but not always, the same as adding D1 and D3 and dividing by 2, which is an average. Unlike the case with the standard laser rangefinder, which in the case of FOs you can switch back and forth to by pressing F2, the Jim LR does not automatically copy the coordinates into the fire support entry screen when calling for support you have to manually type those coordinates. At this point, a warning is in order. Do not copy the coordinates at the top left hand of the screen into the target coordinates box in the fire control panel. Because those are your coordinates, 
not the ones you just ranged with the Jim LR. This is a tip to make sure you do not accidentally call the support mission on yourself or your unit. When using the Jim LR in a mission, it is important to consider the ramifications of directly lasing a target versus preserving the stealth of the unit doing the observation to maintain the element of surprise. For instance, lasing this platoon of T-14 armadas gives the enemy warning via their laser warning sensor, and as a result, they will pop smoke and know that you are looking at them. Realistically, the enemy force may now reconsider whether or not to even enter this area, which is now very obviously under observation and subject to artillery or direct fire. In fact, the enemy at this point might even start preemptively suppressing the tree line with direct or indirect fire and potentially lay down smoke to conceal further movement. Instead, if you use the Jim LR as intended, as a surveillance and intelligence enhancing tool, you can gain the same advantage without losing that element of surprise. Case in point, in this scenario there's an advanced warning from a scouting team up the road that there is an advanced guard of a convoy approaching. This advanced guard, the same T-14 Armada as mentioned earlier, is going to sweep the way clear for the rest of the convoy and assume an overwatch position. This gives a clue where the convoy is headed, so the plan is to set up a fire mission of both Sidarm, Smart, and ICM munitions to impact them and any vehicles passing nearby and put those missions on call. First, range near the T-14s, leaving enough space to make sure to not accidentally set off their laser warning receivers. Then, bring up support menu and create a fire mission at the coordinates that we ranged. Enter the exact coordinates and leave a space between each pair of four digits. Select precision and set the total time of the mission at six minutes while leaving each tube to fire maximum rounds. Label this mission for reference and make it at my command to be able to call it at the right time. Next, set another fire mission, this time just up the road, to catch other vehicles at the same time and hopefully catch more vehicles in the kill zone when the first mission is going off. This time, range to the east of where the tanks are, near the road, then set a wider mission, this time for ICM, 100 deep by 400 wide, set for 2400 mils, label it, make it 6 minutes long, and set this one for at my command as well. Now both of these areas are defined on the map. Wait for the mission to be ready, and for the rest of the convoy to enter the kill zone. Because it takes about 30 seconds from the time the command is given until the first support mission rounds arrive, it is going to be a matter of correct timing, and frankly practice, to get this right in mission. The convoy is arriving, so go ahead and call in both missions. As you can see in the Jim LR, and from the cinematic views, the rounds are on target for at least some of the convoy. With enough practice and improved timing, the aftermath can look more like this. Total destruction. We hope you enjoyed this Jim LR tutorial video. Please visit the forums at steelbeast.com with any questions, feedback, and for more missions and videos like this one. Thank you.